Tonight, we welcome King Dream to the stage of the Phoenix Theater. King Dream is a psychedelic rock project fronted by Jeremy Lyon. This group was founded after his previous project, Tumbleweed Wanderers, broke up and represents a period of introspection, disillusionment, and creative renewal for Jeremy. Tonight, we'll talk with him about all this, and later, the band will play some music. Please welcome to the program, King Dream, a.k.a. Jeremy Lyon. Welcome. How's it going? Thanks for having me on the show. Thank you for coming. Last year, this band... Well, I mean, you and your band people who are not at the table released a full length that was self-titled and uh, essentially kind of tracked everything that was crumbling inside you mm-hmm. and everything that was crumbling around you. Would you agree with that? Yeah. Yeah. That's a fair. <laughs> yep. <laughs> but it had a, a bit of a worldview, too, as, as I noticed. Well, that's where the mm-hmm. everything around him. Okay. So, right. so we're talking yeah, about okay, there you go. man <laughs> versus himself and then also man look around him and yeah, say, my true. God. I can find no peace, both inside myself <laughs> and outside myself. My, my inner turmoil uh, paled in comparison to. <laughs> well, and, and the, that's the yes. Go ahead. The larger turmoil, which was kind of uh, that's like first world problem blues. <laughs> well, kind of we'll, 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 we'll get Not to that. To, uh, yeah, but uh, it, which I think is a fascinating thing. The, the the push and pull of like, oh, I feel so bad, but I have no right to feel so bad, mm-hmm. and I think that caused you uh, a, a bit of tension. But we'll come back to that. Um, you call this the a quarter life crisis album. Mm-hmm. Would you say that this is like the most intense period of crisis that you've had internally? Uh, I'd say it was. Um, well, when I was, I dropped out of college when I was like eighteen, nineteen. That was a little uh, intense too. But I think that this was more so for sure because it's kind of you know I was twenty five and it's like more deciding whether to stay in music, you know, it's like I've, I've spent five years now and <laughs> if I'm, if I'm getting out now, it's the time to get out. And, uh, but it felt like a renewal where I was like, you know, I know I want to be doing this and I need to find a new way to do it. Well, and that's where you ended up obviously, mm-hmm. but it took a while to get there. I mean, I think we're yeah. both those scenarios are kind of similar. 18 year old, you feeling like life is not right. And 25 year old, you feeling like mm-hmm. life is not right is life had looked one way. Mm-hmm. And now all of a sudden that did not feel right. And you needed to not be doing that anymore. Mm-hmm. And it just, I think it like built and built and built inside you. And then, you know, you had your beautiful caterpillar moment where you became a beautiful butterfly. <laughs> <laughs> um, very painful though, to shed the skin mm-hmm. and grow the beautiful wings. <laughs> would, you, would you agree with that? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, my totally. God, you were in school for 18 or not 18 years, but like 14 years. Mm-hmm. And now it was time to not be in school anymore. It was time to do music when you were yeah. 18. Yeah. And conversely, uh, Tumbleweed Wanderers, a band that you were one of the major components of, right? Yeah. Yeah. I founded that um, actually with, with Zach, who is now the, he's now the bass player in, in King Dream as well. So it's like the mob. They, all, they always come back. <laughs> we all come back. Yeah. But that project, Tumbleweed Wanderers, like represented a way of creating that's so different than this. Mm-hmm. It was very collaborative. It, yeah. it wasn't the spotlight on you necessarily. Mm-hmm. It was the spotlight on the group, but also like the content wasn't necessarily like, here's all my pain. Now right. I'm going to sit at a table with these two guys and talk about <laughs> it. It just, it was much, much different. So, mm-hmm. you know, um, the transition to it being King Dream um, is essentially what this album tracks. Mm-hmm. Um, how would you compare the breakup of that band to like the breakup of a romantic relationship? Uh, it's, it's pretty similar in a lot of ways. <laughs> uh, it, well, cause also a lot of us were living together uh, in that band. So, you know, there's still kind of like the moving, the sad moving out part. But it's funny because people would look at that band and they would say, wow, what a success. You know, I mean, you're going on all these tours and things seem to be going really well. You're playing the Fillmore. I mean, I assume you went to the, got all the way to the East Coast. Yeah. Yeah. You know? We were doing national tours for a few years. But of course, you know, it's not always as glamorous on the inside as it is on the outside. So, I mean, there were cracks kind of building in the foundation, which yeah. led to the... It's, it's hard to... Uh, being in a band full time and not making a living <laughs> at it. And, uh, you know, we'd kind of done that for five years and still weren't really, you know, able to make, 
make a decent living on it. So, so, you know, financially it's a big strain. And then, you know, as similar to any kind of relationship where you're, you're not, you know, at 25, you're different from who you were at 19 and, and everyone kind of, you know, it, it's hard, it's hard to kind of make your own business and that isn't really supporting everyone. So what I think is most interesting about this conflict is, you know, you lose this thing that had been taking up so much of your time that really wasn't fitting your life anymore. Tumbleweed mm-hmm. Wanderers was not working for, you know, 25 year old Jeremy Lyon mm-hmm. or the other bandmates. So it, it went away. But it had given your life so much purpose and it had taken up so much of your time and all of a sudden it's a blank canvas. Mm -hmm. And I think from afar that can seem really liberating. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, look at this. Now you can do whatever you want. But actually it's terrifying, you know, and it it, it makes you freeze. Do you agree with that? Um, Yeah, I think so. I mean, I definitely didn't know what the next step looks like for me at that point. I felt like I was lucky because what my interim kind of idea was to start hosting songwriter circles um and i you know i i knew that i kept wanting to write songs and the advice that i always got you know it's like whatever happens you just keep keep writing you keep writing songs whatever happens and you'll figure out a way you know you'll figure out what what you're going to do with those songs later yeah um so i kept writing and i focused on just trying to be able to play solo and it felt similar like like just kind of going back to almost open mics and like songwriter circles where I'm playing solo. And that, that really allowed me to meet a lot of really cool musicians around the Bay as well. Cause I'd be inviting them to do these solo things. Did the blank yeah. canvas, I mean, did that, did that mess with you a little bit? I mean, because you had total freedom. So did you never have a hiccup? Like, were you just like, all right, we're in Tumbleweed no, Wanderers, but now, no. now we're <laughs> playing 50 open mics a uh, year or whatever, you know? No, yeah, it was definitely, it was definitely a hiccup for Cause I, sure. I think about like the, those periods in my life where you, it would seem like, well, great. Now just go out and do it. There's nothing holding you back anymore. Mm-hmm. And, uh, eventually we all figure it out, but there is that period that, uh, what can seem like liberation from afar is actually like the, the, the infinite possibilities are actually mm-hmm. quite paralyzing. Yeah. You know, cause I think in some way, like you don't want to necessarily, jump into anything too quickly. You don't want to commit to anything too quickly because then that can constrain possible future projects or whatever. Mm-hmm. I don't know if any of this stuff resonates. I, I, well, I was definitely, <laughs> again, it's like definitely dating. depressed it's and like... I was, uh, you know, um, not in a good place for, for a while with it for like six months or, or a year. And, uh, which can it was be like, like my, my girlfriend and I had broken up at that for a little bit too, at that point, I think, cause I was, you know, kind of a pain in the ass <laughs> to be around and uh, just didn't, didn't quite know the next step, you know. And act- through making the record, we, like, got back together, too, actually. And sorry to take you back there, and I know that, like, now that we're so far removed from it, it's it's better to just be like, band broke up, then I hosted oh, Songwriter yeah. Circles, and here we are <laughs> at this table today. What a seamless transition. Yeah. But, I mean, where it gets interesting is, is the darkness, because without the darkness, this album would not exist. Mm-hmm. Would you agree with that? Yeah. Yeah. So you had talked about, and sometimes it's a joke and sometimes it's not, I think, um, about how you've been like, ah, I should just go back to school. You Mm -hmm. know what I mean? Because you're at that sort of blank slate. You're feeling like maybe the chasing of the dream is not worth my time. Mm -hmm. How close did you come to doing like a 180 on your life? And what would that have looked like? I think I got about as close as writing that lyric. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. (laughs) In the verse. I mean, I I didn't really look at, at... reapplying to schools you know I'd, I'd taken a year off at UC Santa Cruz to like try to make a living in music you know seven or eight years ago <laughs> yeah so you like you thought about thinking about it that was yeah 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 so you I thought mean, like people probably think I should do this so maybe I should think about doing yeah. it <laughs> so you describe the period as kind of being like uh uh, 30% disillusionment with yourself, <laughs> 30% disillusionment with adulthood, 30% disillusionment with your country. Mm-hmm. Let's talk about the disillusionment with yourself. I mean, mm-hmm. was it just simply I made the wrong choice and in going into music or was it more than that? Uh, I mean, I think it was like maybe, <laughs> maybe I'm not cut out to like be a front person or to, um, you know, maybe disillusionment with like my genre too of kind of like, I don't know, like what are, (laughs) do people even like rock music (laughs) anymore? You know, am I going to need to like learn how to play a totally different style of music if I want to. So classic, classic imposter syndrome. 
Mm-hmm. You were thinking like, I'm not, I'm not good enough for this. The past success I have doesn't really matter. Mm-hmm. Maybe I should just do something else. Yeah. Yeah. Do, do you still battle with that? Do you feel like, even though you're kind of in you know, a better place now? No, no, no. I feel, I feel really good about my path right now. Um, a lot of that for me is just keeping busy, uh, you know? And so, you know, at that point it was like, I wasn't busy. Like I wasn't getting, getting calls to, to do, you know, gigs. And, um, so so when, when I, yeah, for me, when I, when I have like two days of downtime, I don't know what to uh, do with myself. What an interesting thing. So do you feel like that's going to be a lifelong thing for you? Like you need to keep busy forever because you get Pretty the two much, days and then, yeah, then the I imposter d- syndrome starts to set in on the third. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm, really pale so like tanning on a beach or something isn't really it's <laughs> like, not i don't you. really know how to relax it wouldn't be good for your skin <laughs> it's not really, yes. no i mean you're a redheaded man right yeah and yeah. Uh, usually i think the sun it's a little harsh <laughs> on people with red hard, hair it's yes. true my mother has red hair so i know this I, i'm not good at lounging by a pool you know? so, so what was it about adulthood that caused you uh disillusion disillusionment like the expectations of adulthood or like here we are we're adults now uh boy this is a lot less cool than i thought <laughs> <laughs> Is that kind of I where think you're I was, at? I'm definitely hesitant to grow up um in terms of just not not wanting to settle down still wanting to try, you know that was a lot of that was what drew me to music in the first place of like wanting to tour and see the world you know through music and meet people through music and um yeah just the whole <laughs> the whole earning of uh, you know working a real job and earning a living and saving up and that whole path to me that's, that's, just, that's a scary thought yeah i wasn't quite ready for that and and uh you know wanted to mix mix it up for myself so a number of cautionary tales so far don't live with the bandmates it's that's, that's probably it's a, a lot it's yeah a big one. it's hard <laughs> um and uh you know grab on hold on tight when transition time comes because it's rough especially when the country is uh, tearing apart at the seams. So now we get to the third level of disillusionment, <laughs> you and your country of origin. <laughs> so, whatever you want to share on that, because, I mean, we have all lived through the last few years, but right. what, what do you think, I don't know, caused you the most pain to observe, you know, going on in your country? I was writing most of the, the record in 2016, so, you know, <laughs> most, like, like, just kind of, um, finding out that there's so many people who think so differently from you was step one. Like, you know, to me, I never thought that, uh, that we'd be in the position we are today, that Trump would get elected. I mean, I remember I was like, I have family in England. I was visiting them, you know, and I talked to people in England and they're like, so like, is Trump going to be president? I'm like, no way, <laughs> you know, and I was there on the election night and it's like staying up all night and like couldn't couldn't believe it i mean other stuff to you know the whole standing rock thing was crazy to me too because you know we'd put up such a fight there for so long and then it was like trump was in the white house and like immediately it was just ended i think the most interesting thing about your internal conflict was you're seeing all this stuff right Mm -hmm. and it's you know, largely a lot of these policies that you're seeing, they're disgusting you, which are making you question your, you know, your fellow countrymen. They're not like tangibly affecting you. Right. But you're seeing them affect these people who are hurting Mm -hmm. and you hate to see that, you know, you, you hate to see this group being pitted against this group in the interest of gaining power. You hate to see the environment getting destroyed. You hate to see all the different things that you're seeing. Mm -hmm. And these are huge, massive problems. Also like, civilization long problems that now all of a sudden are in our, you know, happening now right in front of us. It didn't happen overnight, but it became apparent that it was a lot more prevalent than you thought it was. Mm -hmm. I think any of us thought it was. Yeah. And what I'm getting at is like, you're having this awakening Mm -hmm. of like, boy, the world seems pretty messed up right now. These Mm -hmm. are huge problems. And now you are also feeling like, boy, my life feels pretty messed up right now. <laughs> do, do you feel like you had some shame about like uh, feeling bad for yourself in in yeah. the midst of all this yeah, other stuff it's going on? Like, how can you be <laughs> pinning yourself because what, like your band broke up or this, you know, compared to and uh, yeah, I mean that whole time too. It was like 
in the midst of like uh, Black Lives Matter. I mean, it was like um, there'd been that same that one week where it was like uh, Philando Castile and uh, Alan Sterling. I think both both were killed by police that same week. You know, so I mean, that was kind of just like 2016 and 2017 in general, like for kind of like uh, you know white males to kind of wake up to you know experiences for for minorities and women and you know all all that stuff so definitely an awakening and you're like trying to figure out how to be an ally how to you know put that you know how to help and if you're a songwriter you try to write songs and i wrote a lot more songs that writing those sorts of political songs too it's like it's so easy for them to come across as cheesy or like not not ringing no, true. Actually, you, you, know? got, you got quite bold with Patriot. As a matter of fact, you you it was mm-hmm. it, it was quite in your face, and it's a great yeah song. yeah yeah. That one is probably the edgiest one in terms yeah. of it, where it's I mean it's quoting a lot of different people, and it's almost uh, the the third verse especially I think is um, when it's it's first they gave the black man Jesus and when his children cried out save us. They gave the white poor Jim Crow, and they told him you'll always be better than a Negro, which like you don't. I mean, we we don't say that word now. No, it's in your face. I'm, yeah, you know, and uh, I think you'll you'll find that uh, you want to go back out on the road, mm-hmm. and how will that be received in different areas in the country is is mm-hmm. something you want to look at as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I've been. I mean, <laughs> we done one gig. Where it was like in the, it was like in West Virginia, and it was like they sang some kind of, like this their own version of the national anthem while like cracking open to two beers like two course lights and we we're going on next and we had like a song about not wanting to fight in in wars and you know right? yeah so you if stone cold steve austin opened for you <laughs> yeah, and then basically. you guys headlined yeah tough act yeah. to follow i mean you'll get that on youtube it's like with any uh uh it was like i did a song with rainbow girls and it's like they had some you know it's like i hope this guy isn't trying to like align himself with martin luther king like you need to stay away from him and i'm like you, you mentioned one of the the shootings uh you wrote a song like the night of or the night after one of those. Yeah. And what, which song was that? That one was called Hand in Hand, which we didn't play that tonight. But um, yeah, that one was the second song on the record. And that, yeah, those lyrics kind of came point out. That was like another actually time when I was in England. I kind of visit, go to England every year to visit visit my grandma. And uh, for a few trips there, it was like every time I would go over there, then like the country would just be in turmoil. And I'd just be up all night like reading the news. And it was, you know... Once was the election. Once was was the those shootings. So so yeah. I mean, I I'm gonna keep coming back to this, but like the the growth that was happening inside you while you're being you're feeling bad about yourself, but you're mm-hmm. feeling worse about the world, and now it's totally. compounding what you're feeling about yourself because you feel like you have no right to feel bad right. about yourself. Yeah, fascinating. Like it's just mm-hmm. like a fascinating thing because it makes the recovery from you know this really traumatic event your band breaking mm-hmm. up i mean regardless of how bad the world is compared to your personal life it, there's no getting around the fact that breakups are traumatic and breaking up with the band is almost as traumatic or more it's you know it's mm-hmm. like you your life revolves around it yeah it's, it's personal and know. while it's... you were experiencing that the world is going mad and you're trying to channel that and so you write a song about a shooting and this is a racially charged thing. We're in a racially charged moment. So I'm curious, how do you, how do you approach that in a song? Cause that's a dicey, dicey sort of topic, mm-hmm. you know, it, um, it's, it's important to shed light as an artist, but as you know, living in this era, it's like, it's, it, you really have to thread the needle in, in a, in a certain way. Yeah. Um, well, it's gotta, it's gotta be honest and ring true. So it's first of all, trying to, you know, not, um, just just listen to how how i'm feeling about it it's it's your perspective but also wanting to do some research too because you don't <laughs> want to be totally getting you know your facts wrong so i mean i'd i'd start watching a lot of documentaries i was watching like uh 13th and gasland and uh requiem for the american dream all those kinds of kinds of documentaries just trying to trying to learn a little little more about the kind of history of what was going on. Uh, and that, that had, I think overall, that kind of became my angle with those songs was like, you're just seeing history repeating itself, you know, and they just maybe switch out a few words or target yeah, that's, different. That's weird because in hand in hand, uh, you've got a line that, that grabbed me right off the bat, crying for someone you've never met. Mm-hmm. And uh, 
<clears throat> I immediately went back to Martin Luther King because that was of my generation. You were actually singing about uh, something much more contemporary. But that line uh, keeps coming back around and is still valid and was valid has been valid for probably over a hundred years, mm-hmm. for hundreds of years. And then, I mean, with this cycle, it all it, it became. I mean, because because now with phones, it's like people are you know. I mean, I guess you're watching that, but it, it's you know now it's like you can see any any person. Basically, you're watching their their death in in real time. You know, I mean, they'll be filmed by their their wife or their girlfriend. You know, and it's like, and these videos kind of surface. I mean, and and it's. So your angle on this song is more of like, a, why are we reliving this over and over and over again? Yeah. What is what is wrong with us that we have to keep doing this? Why and why essentially? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and also to try to, I think, with most of the news too, it's you know people get turned into statistics and numbers, and that kind of desensitizes the whole scope of the situation. And and for me, I was trying to remember, you know, that this is, you know. This is a person, someone who's, you know, got kids or someone who's got a wife, you know, and like trying to think about it on a on a personal level and not as a statistic kind of. I found that that, you know, made me more compassionate and, um, you know, it's like you, you got to get worked up to protest and, and try to make change. And, um, you know, I mean, we've done like the Occupy Wall Street uh protests as well and i don't know i guess in my generation it's like the a lot of the protests that i feel like we've had but you don't really see the results that you're going for and maybe you, we give up too soon maybe it's not quite the, maybe everyone's documenting the protest and not actually getting you know participating as much but um you know it's it's sort of you the question is kind of like how you know what's the best way that I can effectively, you know, make change, be, be on the, the forces of good in this conflict, you know? I think you make an interesting point too, because some of, some of the more activist minded people are kind of over organized protests. You know, their, their thing is like, we need to kick it up a notch more. We need to shut freeways down. Mm -hmm. You know, we need to get people's attention more. And then that gets into a whole other area of uh, what change should look like and how destructive and in your face should it get so Mm -hmm. we don't have the answer because obviously we're still reliving these things you talk about uh, uh, on money and power Mm -hmm. this is a a song that it's not particularly uh, subtle in terms of who it's about Uh, (laughs) you talk about this as a song about greed and about how when you have all the money and the celebrity in the world that still isn't enough so you seek political power yeah yeah <laughs> i wonder it's pretty straight up i wonder in, who in about four lines yeah <laughs> where do you go on that song where do i go i mean like you you obviously you're singing about him and, and an archetype of a person mm-hmm. and a, of you know he's obviously like a cartoony version of that or a caricature yeah. of that in real life but mm-hmm. i'm just curious your song is it just describing that phenomenon does it have any commentary on no that? i think the next verse too that's uh that was more inspired by wrecking for the american dream that where it's uh, fabricate consumer one hand washes the other two kinds of citizens those who give orders and those who follow them so and that's more of how you kind of I mean there's everyone's getting sold things that they that they don't need or yeah. want and, and it's there's a whole science to I mean a lot of it's marketing market but a lot that. of it's yeah. deeper than that of, of you know really trying to convince you that you're you're not <laughs> whole and you need this thing to fill that, that, fill that void. Hole. Yeah. And which, you know, a lot of it's just buying, buying shit, <laughs> you know, filling like, our oceans. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And yeah, it's, it's, it's all that. And that's, you know, and it creates, that's how you erode a middle class and you have a two, you know, just like a, a ruling elite and, and everyone else and produces. And so, so, I don't know. I mean, I, th- I guess that's where that's where it kind of opens up wider where it's not, it's not just like a diss track <laughs> at Trump. Um, <laughs> yeah. that's a little more of, I don't know, maybe like a <laughs> commentary on, on the economy or something. I don't know. And you said Patriot was the one that kind of stood out to you. The yeah. Lines on that song. Absolutely. Yeah. It's, in- it's been interesting to me because even when I'm touring, 
you know, you'll tour a lot of like college towns or cities, right? Those are most of what you play. So you, even if you're in a red state, you're usually playing the blue dot in the red state. That was actually a question I had for you because you did tour a lot, even though you weren't playing overtly political music. I was curious, you talk about disillusionment with this country. Did touring the country do anything one way or the other for you about well, how you felt Well, it's kind of it? like you'll drive for hours along the interstate and then you'll see all these signs, you know, about like a Congress created Dust Bowl and, the, you know, the, yeah. and... uh or you'll see signs about, signs you know, that are like, kill it, that you're, you know, abortion's killing babies. And you'll see all these signs about call this, you know, call 1-800 to find Jesus and stuff. But then you get into a town and you meet the nicest people and you make friends everywhere you go. These so. people writing these signs and believing these things are the nicest people you'll meet. <laughs> One-on-one when you meet these people, it's just, it's striking uh, how beautiful they are. Mm-hmm. And if you don't get into politics, you leave thinking, I, I met a genuine person. Because they are genuine people. Mm-hmm. Uh, they just absolutely see the world and see what they need out of the world in, in a completely different way mm-hmm. than we do. And uh, no, I had a, a conversation with, uh, with a friend last night, and and, uh, and I won't go into it because I don't want to point him out. But he made a statement to me that, oh, my God, I had no idea you believed that. Mm-hmm. Son of a gun. <laughs> and... Uh, uh, yeah, and, and but at the same time, my experience with that person is this guy is is a is a great dad and a good friend, but we believe differently. Yeah, looking forward to the Civil War. It's going to be a lot of fun. Um, the <laughs> second one. Um, <laughs> well, there is that. It seems like this album takes us on this ride, and like I said earlier, it's like thirty percent, thirty percent, thirty percent, ten percent, and then we end up at this song, which is called "All the Present Has Endowed," and it just. I don't know. I mean, I'd love to hear whatever you can tell us about the song, but it just kind of feels like you and also we, the listener, have like been through a war. Mm -hmm. And then there's just this like nice song that puts a button on it at the (laughs) end of it. Tell us about that song. That one, it took a while to write. Most of my songs have a lot of, I have the chords first and the lyrics take longer because it's, and listening to the music and being like, what, you know, what does this music want to say? And that one is more of like a, a prayer or the mantra, kind of like a non-denominational prayer sort of song, um, you know. And it seems kind of cheesy that it's like love is everywhere; it's in all things. Or, um, but it's it's kind of just that you know, the more present you are in that moment, you know, the richer your life is. The more you can give to everyone around you the the better your experience is you know so it's um yeah it's kind of it's just about trying to and for me that's like what music is in general and people especially going to see live music is like we're trying to create these magical moments you know and that's and that's like what i live for that's what that's why i'm in music is these these kind of transcendent moments where you're playing a song or you're, you're listening to someone play and you're feeling, you know, feeling everyone's presence there. And, and it does s- seem like you're inviting them to live the moment with you. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's a great tune too. Thanks. Thanks. It actually is. So yeah, that's th- well, And the way you just described it makes it even more poignant because it's like, despite it all, we can still have this moment, right. which will transcend us past this reality, mm-hmm. even if just for a minute. Mm-hmm. And then we can all come back to this disaster when right. we get done with this moment. <laughs> I, d- I, tr- I like with, you know, I mean, I, I love records that take you on a journey and I want it. I want it to feel like you've gone through some roller coaster of a ride that kind of in general, like brings you in at the beginning, you know, and then it generally gets darker, you know, and, and you have despair and and you hopefully come out on the other side having learned something and uh you need salvation <laughs> so it's gonna be a bummer of a record if you just things go from bad to worse than they end and it'll be like a coen brothers <laughs> album you know it's just yeah and and you you found salvation in love um you talk about your girlfriend and, and the history you have together and all that and uh it seems like the reconnection that you two had was a really important part of your personal story I Absolutely, mean, you, yeah. You don't need to know that to listen to this album, mm-hmm. 
But just if you're, you know, curious about how the writer ended up, this was an important thing for you. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, I'd written that song, My Love for Her, but, you know, before I'd done, before I'd made the record, obviously. But it, but at the time we were together and then, and then we'd, you know, had a rough patch and we'd, we'd broken up for a bit. And then she came in to um, sing on the song and we actually kind of, got back together sort of through that whole process of having her on the record and um and i'm so glad <laughs> it's like the best best thing your band's name comes from uh the sandman series mm-hmm. and who was that by neil gaiman neil gaiman what drew you to this name like why is the uh, the king of dreams a powerful one for you um well first of all i'm i'm sort of always on the lookout for band names that would you know you anytime you hear a couple words together like I like the ring of that you know and you know like oh, I'll make a note of that and um I should, yeah Caitlin my girlfriend she she uh she was really into that series and so she she lent me one of those books and um the mystique of the character really grabbed me in terms and it was you know one he has a lot of different names it's it's like Morpheus the king of dreams referred to just as king dream and that ring to me in a really in a really cool way and and his character isn't he's not uh good or evil uh he just kind of is and he's he's always been and he's kind of like you know the steward of this realm kind of um and i just i liked that um that it wasn't black and white and you know that there's kind of all this gray area. When I first started listening and trying to figure you guys out, or which uh, which is no one has the right to do that. But as I was listening and trying to see how it would relate to me, I'm looking at the name King Dream. Ah, is that a person or is that a thing? Mm-hmm. Uh, because what a cool thing it would be to have the King Dream itself, mm-hmm. or is it King Dream? I I I wanted a moniker that. I mean, for me, the vision of this band is is as a full band, but I also wanted it to be a little malleable and where I could play, I could perform these songs solo that the kind of the songs work kind of in whatever arrangement um, suits the environment that I'm playing in, you know? Um, well, and also you wanted it to be a project that could never break up. Absolutely. Yeah. So Less, lesson learned from Tumbleweed mm-hmm. Wanderers. Yeah. So I'm like, I can't break up with myself as long as I'm doing music. <laughs> so you just like kind of like the mysterious omnipresence of it yeah yeah just and the and just the fact that it can kind of be anything this it, could be you and a 50 person orchestra or this could be you and a guitar yeah and yeah king dream and still works I, for either I, I, of those. it's still yeah i'm still a little uncut sometimes people like my friends will kind of make fun of like mr dream or something and i'm like no i'm not i'm not saying i'm, I'm no a I, i'm a king actually <laughs> i'm not mr i'm a yeah, king I'm thank a you king. very much <laughs> So that, and you will show me the proper yeah, respect. Yeah, I'm like, it's a project, it's a band, it's not, you know, that it's uh <laughs> No, I think you should it, lean into it. I think yeah. the next period of growth for you is understanding that you're royalty and expecting <laughs> that people treat you as such. It's, it's enough. Um, I mean, if you're going to play the character, you need to inhabit yeah, the character. Yeah, you're right, I need it. <laughs> so you wrote the song Helmet, Stone, and Sand based off of the foreword of one of these books, mm-hmm. which the song you can find on the After the Fire Benefit album for the fires we had recently. What was so inspiring about that forward that you wanted to have a song kind of mirror that? Um, well, that the, the forward's kind of, in, it's, it's all about um, after the, uh, it's about the death of gods, basically, and that a, um, a god actually suffers a fate worse than death when the last believer in that god doesn't, believe in them so basically you're you you know if you exist as kind of a concept in people's minds and no one believes in you then then you cease to exist and you never existed um and i just found that to be a pretty cool like a pretty (laughs) pretty cool concept to explore of, uh, was, there was a Star Trek uh, episode of that, the original. Oh Star yeah, Trek. Oh, which Requiem one? I gotta for watch Apollo, that. I think. Apollo. Uh, yeah, it was maybe Requiem for Apollo or something about Apollo, and and uh, Apollo is is uh, living alone on this planet now because all of his followers have disappeared, and it's just him. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, and he was kind of living in his own hell to a degree. He he became uh, he became kind of the uh, antagonist of the of the episode because mm -hmm. he needed to bring followers down. Yeah, he was living in hell. But she, yeah, you can't once no one once no yeah. one believes in you. That was interesting. Uh, yeah, that's exactly the in the end. That's that was Kirk's speech, basically <laughs> that very thing. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> also in the Simpsons episode Treehouse of Horror Six, a very similar concept <laughs> happens. Um, there's a, a vignette about the attack of the fifty foot eyesores, and uh, they sing a, Lisa Simpson and Paul Anka <laughs> sing a song called "Just Don't Look." And if we stop paying attention to the monsters, they die. <laughs> and so again, you know, I mean, this is why this is timeless stuff. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I guess the other part too, well, the, the end of that song too, I mean, and it, and it goes back to King Dream, right? Is he's uh, an eternal, he's not a God and eternals don't require anyone to believe in them. They're eternal. They're exactly. So that's kind of the end of that song is I will still be here at the helmet stone and saying, so, you know, that kind of constant that's kind of, and that's, it's not, um, it doesn't, it's not like at the hands of fads or beliefs, you know, it's, it goes beyond that. So I, I liked, I was just drawn to that, that concept and, um, yeah, it could work to a benefit to, to a compilation for people who've lost their homes or something, you know, that, that home can go beyond, um, a physical, I mean, obviously it's, you can't replace what you've lost in those, but they're, they're, that. Hopefully, there's some kind of. Uh, Hopefully, home you can is find a, a positive. Yeah, actually, when you think about it, but can, can it be? Home. Can home? Can uh, hope can be eternal? Can home oh, be, exactly. be eternal as well? Exactly. You maybe lose your house, but can you find your home again? Mm -hmm. Can that be eternal? Yeah, and that I wasn't really conscious of that when I, we put that song on the compilation, but just kind of talking with you guys. Yeah, we're it, we're helping you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I think Thanks that, for that. <laughs> I, I, here's some more help. I feel like <laughs> maybe, maybe like, maybe like you take on a cult persona. Have you thought about taking on a cult? Like cult. Persona? Mm. Cause like you, you as King dream, you're eternal. You have the look, you have the hair, <laughs> you have the beard. Ginger Jesus was you have, the altar. You have the flashy <laughs> outfits, <laughs> the name, the mystique. It's good. You know, it's like, I'm not saying like that you should start a cult. Mm -hmm. But I think it would be, <laughs> you can, I think that it would just be like you an interesting. be a cult. Exactly. Yeah. A character. A one, a cult yeah. of one. Uh, well, I mean, or if anybody wants to join, you can. Yeah. I just think, um, you know, we're talking brands. Yeah. We're talking 2019. <laughs> we're talking about the ugly parts of our world. Let's talk about the good ones. Brands. Yeah. You're a cult guy now. <laughs> it's like King Dream. Yes, it's your musical project, yeah. but also you are your musical project. You are eternal. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Have you thought about this? Uh, I haven't thought about starting a cult. I, d I plan thought about band branding yourself as, as a cult, as, as a cult, cult leader. leader. I'll make business cards. Yeah, yeah. Everybody, everybody <laughs> wears gowns out. I mean, it's, I, I really think that we're like on the precipice um, of something. Yeah. This might be the missing piece. Yeah, I yeah. think I do. I, it's, I keep trying to figure out ways to take the stage, you know, you got to take the show to the next level. So Tumbling Some Wanderers kind of a, was just a band. This is, this <laughs> so is so much band. more than that. <laughs> Uh, you know, join me. <laughs> anyway, I like the pitch. Yeah, yeah. We can good, talk more afterwards. I, uh, you know, I can be behind the I scenes. I need some, part some of this. consulting. Yeah, you know, I mean, um, uh, this is an unabashedly pro cult episode, and uh, <laughs> I, I love it. You, you said at this project that you, you're not trying to be the front person. You're more of a facilitator. Mm -hmm. You're a facilitator of music. You're mm -hmm. a facilitator of experiences. You're a facilitator of whatever you want King Dream to mean to you, the viewer. King Dream will be to <laughs> you, the viewer. Well, thank you for joining us tonight. Um, Thanks so much for having me. I know this project is a very different vibe from your previous band. You know, I mean, it's like we talked about it earlier, but it's a lot different doing that than sitting at a table and having two strangers talk to you about your personal life <laughs> and your darkest personal moments. So, <laughs> you know, uh, thank you for being willing to do that with us tonight. Yeah, yeah, thank you. My pleasure. <laughs> and uh, the new album is called King Dream, which is named after the band King Dream and maybe the cult King Dream. And it's available <laughs> on all streaming services. And now we get to listen to some of those songs right here at the stage of the Phoenix Theater. A performance by King Dream is up next. Thanks again for joining us. Thanks, Thanks. for having me. <laughs> Say 
some smile, but nothing's coming now. Sitting at home, feeling alone, not to shit, pretending I'm a poet. I should go back to school, or at least be the news. I live a life I choose. When it's all said and done, so the first one probably Wish I could write songs about the meadows and birds, but I'm a city kid, not talented. Smith in on words. I wish I could put a copyright. The phrase I love is for a song on the radio. Pay me the same old tune. I didn't get the business said, oh, at least that's what they said. I need a life I choose. When it's all said and done, it's all for us, we're probably. But I'm praying you don't give up Cause there's a lot of life in me still I ain't giving my all since the summer Before last fall To fire in these bones In the alley views on the late night bones I need a life I choose But when it's all said and done It's only first one problem lose When it's all said and done It's only first one problem When it's all said and done, it's only first one problem. 
Chased by my demons. 